Welcome back to Lap of the World. I'm Richard and today we're gonna do a little bit of a track day related science experiment to find out if this style of brake cooling scoop actually does anything. I've had this set of brake cooling scoops for quite a while. Uh, they have been on the car at various points as you can tell by some of the the wear and tear and uh, little minor adjustments I've made to them for clearance purposes. But I've also had them off the car for quite a while now uh, because I ran into some significant clearance issues trying to run wider front tires at one point. And now having run the car with the OEM scoops, which are basically just tiny versions of this, no scoops at all, and these scoops, I really haven't noticed a difference. So I kind of wonder if they do anything at all for my car. I haven't changed the rate at which I crack rotors. That's still one rotor every five or six events will typically crack. I haven't run into any brake cooling issues that have become apparent through decreased performance or failure, nor have I developed any other ancillary issues around the braking system. So that's what we're gonna do today is actually perform a little bit of an experiment to see how effective these things actually are. Now, there are a couple of problems I see with them right off the bat. But those are going to be way easier to illustrate once I have them on the car and set up. So I'll get to doing that here shortly, but before I do, I'll talk a little bit about how I want to test this. Now, as I've alluded to before on the channel, your car's brakes are basically friction devices that convert speed into heat. And then they dissipate, ideally, that heat into the air that's surrounding and flowing past the calipers and rotors. One way to assist the calipers and rotors in doing their job of dissipating the heat is to funnel more air over and around them, and that can be done by ducting, or in the simplest case, adding a scoop. For the scoop to be effective though, the leading edge of the scoop has to be catching air and then funneling it out the tail end of the scoop, which then is pointed at the caliper and rotor. So the way we can see if these things are actually doing anything is if they actually have air flowing over them. Now that's difficult to tell, but I've taken some inspiration from really old school aerodynamic research. So what I've done is I've had my, I've had my lab assistant, AKA my son, hot glue some uh, lengths of lightweight string to uh, the other brake scoop. So we can tell that if air is flowing across these, they should move. Now, this is definitely a uh, pretty ghetto aerodynamic testing methodology here. You know, I don't have these 3D models. I haven't put them in a CFD program. I don't have a smoke generator and a proper wind tunnel. So grain of salt with everything we do here today, but we're gonna be trying to be as scientific as we can be given the uh, facilities and skills at hand. So I'm gonna get these things stuck on the car. I'll describe a couple of the problems that I've observed and we can make some predictions. You guys can tell me how ridiculous I am in the comments or what you expect out of this. And then uh, we'll run a couple of tests and see what we end up with. So now that we have our test scoop on the car, let's take a short walk around here and I'm gonna illustrate some of the problems that I see with this setup. First, what you're looking at now is the front lip spoiler on the NSX. And then behind that, you're looking at the undercarriage in general. Now I'll point out at this point that the suspension is at full droop because that corner is still jacked up. And the suspension being at full droop means that that is also the lowest position that the brake scoop would be in relative to the undercarriage of the car. At this point, we're a little bit below the level of the front spoiler, and you really can't see much of any of the brake scoop at this point. Now what that means to me is that it really isn't in the airflow underneath the car. So where is it actually getting its air from? Well, there is a small intake up here on the front bumper cover that leads to the air conditioning condenser. That does flow through to the wheel well, but let me show you something. If we come back around here to the wheel well, you can see that there's a fender liner there and it has louvers that are pointed down. Now those louvers are there to exhaust the air that's getting sucked through the air conditioning condenser by the fan that's attached to the back of those. What that all means though is that between 
the front bumper cover here where the intake starts and over here where it would exhaust into the wheel well you have some plastic ductwork, an air conditioning condenser, an air conditioning condenser fan, and a fender liner with louvers that point down. And that kind of leads me to think that very little air is probably actually making it to the leading edge of that cooling scoop. But that's what we're here to find out today is does any air make it to the scoop for the scoop to then deflect it to the caliper and rotor and cool the brakes better? Or is it really more there just to kind of protect the front control arm and uh, look more race car? Well, let's find out. Okay, so I see you in the comments there saying, oh yeah, well, it's not a very big fan. It's not going very fast. That's probably only replicating maybe 20 or 30 mile an hour driving. And those brake scoops would work at higher speeds, I'm sure. Okay, well, I got your higher speed sitting in the floor right there. Now the box for my electric leaf blower advertises hurricane force winds. However, we'll take that to mean in this case that it should at least be able to simulate your average highway speed, you know, 60, 70 mile an hour driving as far as airflow uh, when it's directed pretty much right at the opening and or under the car right in front of the brake duct. So if we don't get any measurable results from this, then I'm kind of comfortable saying that they may not be as effective as they should be. So anyway, here we go, round two. Well, that's pretty interesting. So I've just watched the test footage that you'll have already seen in this video, and I'm kind of left with a conclusion that while there may be plausibly some benefit to using a scoop like this at higher speeds, the lower speed benefit and any really appreciable benefit just doesn't seem to pan out. Certainly the mythical scenario that I had in my head and what I think other people picture when you're talking about a brake scoop of a high speed airstream coming into the leading edge of the scoop traveling along the scoop and then being directed out of the scoop and directly onto the critical brake components, that really doesn't seem to be happening in this case. Now, here are a couple of caveats. Obviously, I'm testing this with an Acura NSX and not a different kind of vehicle, so your mileage may vary. Also, my car is a compromise. It is set up for both street and track, so I do have air conditioning in it, and therefore I have the condensers and the fans and stuff like that in front of the wheel well. If you went full race car with your NSX and removed all that stuff, such that there would be a clear air channel between the front bumper and the wheel well, then I suspect the brake duct would work quite well in that scenario. However, 
for I think most cars that are sort of tracked as a hobby, it seems like the hype around these things may be a little bit bigger than their actual benefit. Obviously, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I haven't had any problems with my brakes personally. Um, that would suggest they are undercooled in their current state with or without a scoop. So I'm not too concerned. Maybe down the road I'll explore something that actually puts an intake out in a high pressure airstream and in a more controlled fashion through some enclosed ducting perhaps, routes the air from there directly to the caliper and rotor. But for now at least, my curiosity as to the effectiveness of these things on my car has been sated. Now comes the point in the video where all of the aerodynamicists and engineers can tell me how wrong I am in the comments below. And frankly, I welcome that. I'm always looking to learn new things, especially when they're applicable to me, and that I can then turn around and apply them to my car to some benefit. So type away if I'm indeed wrong on the internet, and otherwise consider this is a very uncontrolled test in a very uncontrolled environment on one specific vehicle application. So your results may vary entirely, and you should do your own testing and draw your own conclusions. Also for the record, this should not be considered a product review per se. I'm pretty sure the company that makes this particular brake duct is no longer in business, or if they are, they at least don't service the NSX community any longer. I bought these ducts with my own money like six years ago. They weren't even that expensive, so I'm not mad. I may even put them back on the car for the time being, just for giggles. Like I said before, they can't hurt anything. And on that note, I think we're done trying science for the day. I'm Richard, this is Lap of the World. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video, if not at the track.